So another scenario we want to look at is a situation where we want to invite somebody to collaborate uh, and conference with voice, video and document sharing when that person is located outside of our organisation. So they could either be with an organisation that doesn't have Link, for example, or doesn't have these sort of facilities. So what I'm going to show you is what that experience looks like. Now, for me to demonstrate that, I need two machines. So I have this machine that we're looking at, which, which is our corporate machine. So we have our Link client on the left and our Outlook on the right. And we also have another machine, which I'll switch to, which is this one. All that's running on here is a Windows 7 machine running a web browser. So we have Internet Explorer 8 running there. So what I'll do is we'll set up a meeting, fire it up and have a look at the content and you can have a look at the experience that the external user gets when you try and collaborate with them. So to start with, I'm back on my corporate machine. I'm going to set up a collaboration session. So I pop into my calendar, do a new link meeting. I'm going to send it to my external recipient and we're going to say meeting about upcoming presentation. There we go. So I'm going to send that out. So on my corporate machine, I should get a little pop up telling me about the meeting because I've scheduled it immediately and I'm going to select join online. The first thing it's going to ask me is how I want to join this meeting. Well, for, void, for voice, I'm going to use link at this point. Um, you have the option to use your mobile phone, for example, or you can, of course, choose not to join the audio at all. I'm going to join using link. And there we go. At the moment, I'm the only one that's in this conference. OK, so now let's switch to the person who is external to all of our organization and we can have a look at the experience from their point of view. So I'm now on the external machine. You can see for example that their meeting has popped up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open that meeting from my calendar. There we go. And I'm going to select join link meeting. It's going to ask the guest who they are. I'm going to use the name Derek for this. And then I'm going to select join the meeting. And there we go. As an external participant, I can see everybody that's in this meeting. Um, at the minute, there's no content being shared. So let, let's have a look at what happens when we um, start to actually share things as well. Now, bear in mind, we can join as an external participant mm -hmm. and use the full audio and video components just through a web browser. So to show you what that looks like, I'm going to switch back to my corporate machine. There we go. And I'm going to share my desktop. So to do that, I select share and I'm going to select the desktop button. It's warned me that I'm sharing my desktop and it's now adding my desktop share to this web conference. There we go. You can see at the top that it's showing that I'm currently presenting. So let's have, switch back to the other machine and we can have a look and see what it looks like from the external participant. There we go. So as you can see the content's very rich um, it looks very similar to what you would get in the native link line and bear in mind on this machine I am just an external anonymous participant that has been invited to this session. Now in addition to the screen shares we can also do things like request control from the web browser. So what will happen on the corporate machine here is I'll get a request saying Derek wants to control the presentation I'll say yes and now if we switch back to this machine you'll see that Derek can now actually control that remote machine. It's very useful in, in scenarios like IT support and things like that. Now, the final step from this, I mean, what we've done is we now have a voice conference going on. We're also sharing content and we're also allowing remote control. The final step in this is video conferencing. I have the ability to step up this conference now into a video conference. And for me to do that, Bear in mind, I'm the external participant at the moment. I have a single button 
down the bottom there and I have the option to start a video. So if we look at our corporate connection, our corporate machine, we're going to take back control. I'm going to get rid of Word that is started there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start publishing my video. So I'm going to hit the video button and start my video. So I've now started a video conference. Now let's switch back to the external machine and we can have a look and see how it looks from that side of the world. And there we go. As you can see, even in the web browser, so the video is supported. So what we have is a very rich environment that supports voice, video, instant messaging and the full collaboration experience. So I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate that's a very, very powerful combination. So I'm just going to close the conference now. So I've left the call, the pre presentation stopped, and as far as I'm concerned that it's finished. So let's switch back to the other machine and you'll see that the conference has stopped. So we're gonna exit that meeting And there we go, we're all done. As you can see, it's a very, very powerful and flexible platform. And what's more importantly, more important really, is the fact that it's incredibly simple to use. And that simplicity really does drive that end user adoption story.